I just messed up my hair. Reminds me of... (laughs) (laughs) Hey, I'm Louie, but you can call me Lou. And I'm Jules, but you can call me Pearl. And this is the Loop and Pearl podcast. Episode six. Six. With a thumb. With a thumb. Two thumbs. On this podcast, we talk about crocheting and knitting and creativity. Mm-hmm. And yarn and mm-hmm. and drawing and song and dance and whatever yeah. we want. Pirates. Pirates, sometimes. Not yet, but we. I, I think episode 20 is going to be heavily about pirates. Quote us. <laughs> Y'all. We got exciting news. Very exciting news. We hit 100,000 subscribers on Club Crochet. 100,000. Including now, you. Including you. Because you're subscribed. Yeah, I'm assuming you're probably subscribed by now. That's just incredible. Um, I have a whole video thing talking about the 100,000 subscribers. This is not it. I just want to mention how freaking cool that is. I'm very, very, very excited. Thank you so much for following yeah. along with his journey that he started and now yeah. Loop and Pearl is a part of and a lot of things. I honestly never thought we'd hit 100,000 subscribers. So it just really means a lot. If you are subscribed, thank you so much. Uh, I really, really appreciate it. I'm it's so proud cool. of you. I'm, so I'm very of proud of, of myself too. <laughs> <laughs> Also, we want to thank everyone who attended our first live stream, which happened in late February. Yeah. And I thought it went pretty well. It went great. Yeah. I I personally was really happy with how it was all set up. I thought it was really unique for a live stream uh, and pretty fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you haven't, you can rewatch it if you really want to. Uh, we do this cool thing where like she's on this side of the table mm-hmm. and I'm on that side of the table. and You can see my knitting overhead and his crocheting overhead. And then you, we got cameras on both yeah. of us. It was fun. It was really fun. And uh, the chat was bumping. So yeah. thank you, chatty people. Yeah. Uh, we're going to have our next live stream in late April. The day and time hasn't been decided yet. But when it's ready to be announced, we will do so on our Instagram at Loop and Pearl Podcast. So yeah. go ahead and follow that so you're notified. We'll be crocheting and knitting, as always, and we might even play a game that we have an idea for. It's spring! Spring has sprung! And with spring comes less crocheting and knitting, usually. Usually. Yes, that is true. Because things are getting warmer. Yeah. It's not like it snows in San Francisco, right. but things are getting warmer. Today is like beautiful 75 degrees sunny yeah. day, while last week was rain. Some hail. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but, it's been very sporadic here. But spring... Has arrived. Spring has arrived. Which means we need to adjust our knitting a little bit. Yeah. What about crochet? Do you yeah. need to adjust anything? Well, I think it's less that I need to adjust things and more that I that I focus on different kinds of things because right. of the time of the year. I think I'm focusing a lot more on baby stuff because spring makes me think of babies. And there's more babies in our life. That's true. There's I have a, a new babies. niece as of yesterday. So yeah. I'm very, very happy about that. Yeah. Brand spanking new. And our best friends are pregnant again. Mm-hmm. So they're little boys. On Due the way. very soon. Too. Very soon. Yeah. Yeah. So lots of babies. Very exciting. Springtime. Uh, for knitting, because I make a lot of garments, I need to change the fiber content of my projects because I don't want to wear 100% Peruvian wool yeah. in summer or even in spring right. and 70 and higher because one, that's itchy on me because I'm allergic to it. (laughs) And two, it is so warm. Um, So I often use blends that are not 100% wool, Mm -hmm. uh, that have a little bit of linen, maybe some cotton, maybe some elastic in there. Anything that would make it not the warmest thing ever. Some silk. I love working with silk blends. Oh. Yeah. So I've been knitting a lot with linen blends, especially. Yeah, linen. linen's nice because there's not going to, yeah. Do you get sweaty hands when you when you knit with wool? In the summer? Yeah. Sometimes. It really depends. I honestly, if I'm too hot, I'm not drawn to my knitting. I don't I just do something else. Yeah, do, yeah. Yeah. Same. But I really like knitting outside on a on a warm day and finding a shady spot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you see that? What? Look. It's a bird. It's a plane. No. It's the knitter's nook. So I'm going to start off with a selfish knit that was not supposed to be a selfish knit. It was supposed to be a gift (laughs) for someone who is going through a hard time. And I thought it'd be nice to give them some 
cuddly slippers to wear around the house. And I made the slippers and they came out. And they are cuddly. They are very cuddly, but they came out way too small. They actually fit me instead of like a size 11 male foot. <laughs> So these slippers are now my selfish knit. Now I'm going to put them down here on the table because we have a new dual camera system, which is pretty fancy. Yeah. It's been here the whole time. The entire time. Uh, you, don't, you don't remember from episodes one to five, this oh amazing second It's been camera. there the whole time. I just never used it. I set it up every time. And <laughs> just we just didn't, never didn't used use it. that footage. Yeah. So anyway, uh, these slippers are a pattern called Mine, designed by Faye Cunningham. And I used Madeline Tosh ASAP and Colorway Brass, which is a wool, 100% wool, um, because you're going to wear these at night when you're cold and your toes need a little warming yeah. up and you're walking around the house doing your thing. Uh, I've made so many pairs of these slippers before for gifts. Uh, there was one Christmas where I made a pair for all of our friends. I think I ended up making 12 slippers yeah. in a month. And. Our one friend, Travis, wears them every single day. So she had to make him another pair. I had to make pair. him another pair. <laughs> yeah, because he loves them so much. So this is a really great gift pattern. It's pretty simple. The most complicated part is the cables here on the front and then picking up the stitches around the cables. But because it's such bulky yarn, it's so fast and it's really easy to see what you're doing. So it's, if it's the first time you've ever needed to pick up stitches in a knitting project, I think it'd be a, still totally feasible for a beginner to do that. Um, and they come in lots of sizes. I just, I think my tension was too tight and that's why they came out too small. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I've been wearing them a little bit around the house and they're holding up really nicely. And I just, I love this pattern. She has a bunch of slipper patterns. Faye, she has the mine slippers and the yours slippers, which are more feminine and they have a bow. I know, mine and yours. Which one's this one? This is mine. Ah. Not yours. Not mine. Mine. Yeah. It is mine. Yeah. It is, but not your, yours. No, no. It's yours, but it's not mine. <sighs> so yeah, that's my selfish knit. Total accident. But now I have a pair of slippers and I got to get something else for that friend. <laughs> <laughs> so that was your selfish knit. Mm -hmm. What do you got coming up? Like for my own designs? Yeah. What kind of designs you got? Well, I have a colorful design that I'm very excited about. What do you call it? A color block cardigan. That sounds colorful. Let's you know, see it. You know why? Because it why? has big old color blocks. <laughs> and I'm, I'm not sure if I showed this work in progress before on the show. Might but have. here it is like all finished. And it's an open front, pretty long cardigan. Yeah. Uh, and it has these color blocks. Here, I'm going to flip it so you can see the back. Um, that go through an interesting pattern. I didn't... I didn't want the sleeves and the body to match, so I purposely offset the pattern mm -hmm. so so you get a bunch of colors. And I really love it. Uh, the yarn is the brushed alpaca silk by Drops. It's a very affordable yarn. And I held it double for extra fuzz factor. I <laughs> know it feels like a cloud when you put it on. It is yeah. so squishy, so soft. You know, we must have shown this on an episode. I'm pretty before. sure we did. I, I think I put my face on it. Because you were just all about it. Yeah. Uh, so some details I wanted to show you about this cardigan. It's knit flat from the bottom up, and there's some ribbing along at the edge here that helps keep it from curling in because this stockinet stitch here in the middle yeah. tends to curl. Um, and here's the ribbing on the bottom. And then there's some short row shaping on the shoulders to get you the perfect fit with a three needle bind off connecting the front and back and then you knit the sleeves in the round picking them up on the edge here all the way here and they're balloon sleeves so there's no decreasing at all you just knit a tube essentially until the very end and then you decrease and do some ribbing so when I put it on would you say this is a very comfortable pattern for beginners yeah I think so I think if this was your first cardigan you would only have to worry about a few techniques that would be new to you. Um, and that would be the short rows and the seaming up here, the three needle bind off. Um, but these are, I wanted to show you the sleeves on me, these balloon sleeves. I love them. 
Th- I love them so much. <laughs> when you wear this, it really reminds me of my friends from high school. I, I can really? imagine them wearing this. Yeah, yeah. It's a fashionable. Yeah, I can imagine Nicole and Casey wearing this in high school. And you can tell I have uh, a favorite color scheme. I really love... <laughs> Pastel. I love, yeah, I love yellow, mustard yellow and white and pink together. I mean, look at the top of my... Yeah. Um, and I love the contrast between the dark blue and the yellow as well. Uh, I had a hard time picking a color sequence because I I just love all these colors. Yeah. My test editors have been doing a wonderful job on their cardigans so far. A lot of them have finished and they've chosen some of the best color combinations I can think of. There's there's one that has a really 70s feel. There's uh, a test editor who made two cardigans, one for her and one in a smaller size for her daughter. (laughs) And they're the same color, but a different combination, a different order. And so they match, but they don't match. Uh, and I'm just so excited for this pattern to be released. But yeah. By the time the episode is out, the pattern should be live. It's called the Color Block Cardigan, and you can find it on Ravelry, Payhip, and Lovecrafts. I will link it below in the show notes for easy access. And I really hope you like it as much as I do. Okay, I have a work in progress that I'm super stoked about. Super duper stoked. Super duper looper stoked. This work in progress is a future design, I've decided, Uh, and it started off as a personal project using four skeins of one color that I really loved, but as I went along, I realized I needed a contrast color. And here, I'm just going to show you so you understand. This is what I'm calling the So Very V-neck. This is my (laughs) first V-neck design. And the idea originally was just to use the multicolor here, which is Sorella Classic DK in colorway Maui. But then I thought there's so many beautiful colors in this that it would be fantastic if there was a contrast color on all the ribbing. So let me lay this down and show you. Here's the V-neck in dark blue. And I also did the bottom hem in matching dark blue to accentuate the blue splotches. What I think is really cool about this color mm-hmm. uh, here is that you could use literally any of these accent colors mm-hmm. in this as your ribbing. Yeah. You could do a really cool, I saw a nice purple pink here. There's a bunch of oranges. There's a nice purple. That is a great purple. The that purple. would look great on there. You could even do oranges, dark brown yeah. or mm-hmm. even white to try to take away from or, what could be yeah. a distracting amount of color. But I really, I'm so glad I went with dark blue. Yeah. Uh, technically, the yarn I used is a sport weight, so it doesn't match the DK perfectly. But when I saw it in the store, I knew I had to use it because it was the exact right color. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's a little thinner than the MC here. So when I release the pattern, I'm going to probably do another sample and make sure I get a contrast color in the same yarn as my main color. Yeah. I also really like that the mm-hmm. the ribbing on the ribbing. So it's like well, so like these, the separator here. Yeah, so this is ribbing the blue, but this here is actually the side of an increase stitch. Yeah, I had a feeling make. that was the case. You yeah. worked into the just one of the two loops. Right. Well, you you pick up the the first stitch of the row here. Mm-hmm. And so this is you can see the second stitch. I really like it. It gives a lot of definition of mm-hmm. of the between the ribbing and the um, the body of the piece. Yeah, it was a happy little accident. <laughs> so I'm almost done with my first sleeve. They're going to be three quarter sleeves, just like to here on the arm. And I haven't started the second sleeve yet, but I have a feeling by the time this episode is out, it will be done. Yeah, she's going very quickly. I'm. You can tell when Jules is really excited about something because one day she'll be like, I have an idea for something. I'll be like, oh, cool. And then like two days later, she's got a, basically it's finished. And I'm like, what? I only when did you do that even? <laughs> <laughs> I I had to put this down just for a few days because I hurt my finger. But I think I did all of this in in like three days. Yeah, it was insanely fast. <laughs> Seriously, like. Well, it helps that it's stocking it in the round, so you're just knitting every single stitch yeah. in a spiral. So it's pretty quick. Good Those are nice knitting. projects to always have, like on hand ones that you can do really quick mine are the goblins like i love just crocheting goblins when i have, you have that memorized now oh yeah right. i have i have a, a lot of my patterns memorized <laughs> <laughs> so anyway the so very v-neck will probably not be released until later this year probably early fall um but keep an eye out for it 
And I am very, very, very excited to connect with some yarn dyers and see who would want to partner up and uh, help me with getting two colors this time instead of just one. Yeah. My sample. <laughs> and those are all my knits. That's all I got. No crochet this time from me. But what about in the crochet corner? Oh, oh, I got some crochet. Okay. So for the crochet corner, I'd like to show you, start by showing you my latest designs. I don't have any selfish crochets this time because I've been really focusing on a lot of different space themed designed patterns. Um, and my newest design, which you might have seen on my YouTube channel, are for crocheted stars. Let's show you it on this overhead thing. And I really, really like these crocheted stars a lot. And I couldn't just stop at one. I like the smile. So, <laughs> yeah. The smile is so cute. I made this one on the live stream last time, and I really, really like putting little faces on them now. Um, but I I couldn't just do one star, so I've done a lot of different stars. Two, three, four, five. And then there's this itty bitty star. <gasps> Little so tiny star, cute. and it's attached to a moon with a cute little face. Yes, it's, I love the moon. The moon is definitely my favorite of the patterns because it's extremely simple to make. Um, it's all just made in one single piece that you just sew together, and uh, it's I can make these moons in like 15 minutes. Um, these Show stars, off. though, I can make <laughs> insanely quick, like crazy fast they're i mean they're little tiny patterns he's just to show off this I'm is just, this is who he really is i'm just here to brag um <laughs> <laughs> well and i'm here to look pretty <laughs> uh but yeah these are the newest patterns to the club crochet library and i'm so excited uh for them some of them i have been working on for a long time and then some of them are actually not my original patterns like this one here is uh a pattern by the great Sir Pearl Gray. You've probably heard of him if you've been a fan of this channel for a while. Uh, he does a lot of different um, crochet patterns with us. And so what I did was I took a, uh, our star pattern from our Animal Crossing bell bags. Uh, and this was his bell bag star, and this one was my bell bag star. And then I was like, okay, but let's see if I can experiment and what other stars can I make? And I just got a little out of hand. <laughs> I, I noticed the difference between these two, the the rounded edges of Sir Pearl Grays and the pointy edges mm -hmm. of yours. That's pretty cool that yeah. you're able to do that. I use a mini peacock, uh, which is basically like you chain and make a little spike at the end uh, to make my points at the end ends of all my um, stars here. Uh -huh. And he does not. So that way it makes his nice and right. soft. His, his is a very different style. Mm -hmm. it's, I would say like cutesy but the but the size of yours is what makes it adorable <laughs> this makes me feel like it's a lucky charm i just yes i love it i love lucky charms yeah. i want to check the moon this too why haven't you just made like lucky charms like <laughs> mini you, horseshoes like, rainbows and the red balloons i should have this month really good job by the way you're welcome yeah and that is not the only space themed pattern that is new to the channel. I've been kind of going ham on the space stuff. Uh, the next new space pattern is this UFO, which you might have seen before, but you probably haven't seen the new feature that I've designed it, uh, with it. So what's really cool is this window here can actually be inverted. You push <gasps> it right back in. What? Yeah, like any bu belly button. I work into the back loops on the top of the window there, so it's easy to tuck it in. And you, the reason you tuck it in is because the pattern also comes with this little alien. You can see it right there. And you can tuck him right into the spacecraft. And he is he's in his little spaceship yeah. there. So I'm I'm kind of working on making these toys into more of actual toys. Yeah. Uh and I I'm really, really proud of this UFO pattern. Uh, the idea of it being inverted like that was actually another user that goes by Sunshine. Um, she's always in the live streams. And she emailed me and was like, check out what I did with your rough draft of this UFO. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's such a good idea. Could I use that in the pattern? She said, oh my gosh, yes, please do. So uh, thank you so much, Sunshine, if you're watching this. And that is the second of the space-themed patterns that are brand new for this month. So with all this space stuff that I've been making, uh, I thought it'd be fun to put them all together to make a baby mobile. So the basic idea is four main uh, pieces. If you look at this overhead, you'll see 
here's the four main pieces. Now I don't have the planet Earth done just yet, so I have this little miniature planet Earth. Um, I've been making all these during live streams. And you can see that planet Earth will be the next one. Uh, so it's going to be these four in a circle, and these will be going spinning. And then in between all of these are going to be the smaller designs, being the stars. Like yeah, that. like that. And then in the very center, I'm going to do a sun. And my idea for the sun, I don't know if this is going to work out, but my idea right now is having two orbs um, with stuffing in between the two orbs, uh, glass or, or plastic see-through, and then having lights in the very center so when you light it up, it shows through them so, and turns it into a sun. Right, and, but when you say two orbs, you don't mean two orbs right next to each other. You mean inside. inside. One inside yeah, the other. Yeah, one inside the other yeah. one. Yeah, I don't know if it's going to work. Uh, we're going to see because I'm going to do it on a live stream, but I'm very excited of just the idea of it. Uh, mm -hmm. I think it's just going to be so cool, and I don't have a baby in mind to give this to. I do. It's uh, Our friend is having another boy. Okay. I do, I'm not making this for a specific baby in mind, but I will be giving it to a baby. It's because he doesn't like deadlines. That's true. Yeah, that's it's the true. Only I don't like deadlines. He's not picking a child to give yeah. this to right now. <laughs> and and also, I told him I'd give him a baby mobile for the first kid, and I totally dropped the ball. He on totally that. did. So now I'm not overcommitting. You owe them a baby present. I do owe them a baby present. <laughs> yeah. So that's my that's kind of my work in progress for right now. Uh, and then the last thing I really quickly want to talk about is the upcoming designs. Um, I don't have any to show you, but upcoming, I'm going to do a fundraiser for Earth Day. Um, and it's not just me. I'm doing a fundraiser with a few other Amy Groomy artists that I'm a really big fan of. Um, I've been doing fundraisers for Earth Day for the past two years. And this year, I just kind of wanted to up the game a little bit. So all the proceeds during the fundraiser are going to be going straight to the World Wild Laugh Foundation. And me and two other Amy Groomy artists are each doing our own uh, endangered species. And we're each doing our own patterns for it. And then all the purchases for the pattern will go to the World Wide Left Foundation. Can you say, can you give them a hint as to which species your design is inspired by? Um, I can't yet because I keep switching my Oh, ideas. okay. Well, what about some of the other ones I can which I know are finished? Yeah. I can, so I can tell you what one of them is for sure. Oh, I can tell you what the other two are because the other amigurumian artists are way more professional than me and finished their <laughs> patterns when I told them to. <laughs> uh, so one of them is Sir Pearl Gray, which you have, I've obviously talked about. Um, and he is going to be making a rhino, which is really cool. A he's black rhino. A black rhino, yeah. Um, and I really like, he uses this little stitch in it, which I'll probably be talking about during our next Loop and Pearl. Um, but it's called the bean stitch, and I really like it. I'm gonna use it in all my patterns. You sound now. like such a crochet dork. I love it. It's I'm I think it's really cool. I really like working with patterns with Sir Program because he comes up with ideas for stitches that I hadn't thought about. What's the other one? The other one is going to be a red panda, um, which is the cutest of the endangered he species. He hasn't shown me this one. <laughs> it's so I cute. I haven't seen this one yet. I'm very like, excited about it. I don't want to. I don't want to spoil too much about it. Um, but I'm very excited. And the very, very last thing I want to talk about is a giveaway that I'm doing with another YouTube channel called Animal Logic. It's this YouTube channel that I'm a huge fan of. Uh, they do videos about wildlife and they're just awesome. I love them. So uh, we're doing a giveaway over there for an actual crocheted sea otter. Um, and I'll put the link in the um, description and in the show notes uh, about where you can enter this giveaway. But it's really cool. and. I'm just so excited to be working with this YouTube channel. I am a huge fan of them. So just the opportunity is, is very exciting for me. So if you haven't already, go check out Animal Logic. Yeah, go check out Animal Logic. They're a very, very good, good channel, a cool channel. <laughs> <laughs> You're such a dork. I love you. <laughs> and that's all I got. That's it? That's it. Just a big crochet corner at time. Just crochet corner. corner. I'm proud of you. Keeping things short. Keeping it Succinct. short. Succinct. Yes. <laughs> I have a problem with that. So I'm trying to pull it in a little bit more. Yeah. Well, we have a lot of very, very exciting projects that are coming up uh, that we can talk about next episode. Until then, go ahead and give this video a like. If you haven't already, give Club Crochet a subscribe. Yes. And to the 100,000 of you that are already subscribed, thank you so much again. It really means a lot. Thank you. 
Happy hooking. Happy knitting. And pasta la pizza. Bye. Bye.